horny. <laughs> I love it. So from my multiple performance personas today, I am a Mexican, Scottish, vernacular philosopher. In the name of art, people have crucified themselves as a form of protest. People have created fake corporations to denounce environmental injustice and printed useless money and conceptual passports to invent their own countries. In the name of art, people invent mysterious languages, religions, communities, and architectures that are more congruent with our needs and aspirations. Artists and writers have envisioned a parallel universe in which our contemporaries can engage in meaningful forms of freedom and creativity. And in this sense, true democracy can only exist in the imagination of art and literature. So dear audience, today I am your mirror and you are my temporary community. I am in love with you and you are a bit scared of me, <laughs> of the possibility of me asking you to do something outrageous in the name of art, like taking your clothes off in ritual time while singing a punk mariachi opera. Because <laughs> that's the reputation of performance artists, but I won't do it this time. <laughs> I won't. And I say I love you because my only hope is in your eyes. Because as my audience, you are my salvation and source of hope, and together we can change the course of history, even if only for the duration of this talk. I say, in my world, there is food, clothing, housing, medical attention, and education for everyone. In my world, there is no difference between sameness and difference. And borders are easy to cross, especially those from south to north. In my world, there are no illegal aliens, no others, no good or bad guys. There are no terrorists or crime cartels. In my world, there are no guns because there is no fear. In my world, there is a place for everyone, even if only for the duration of a talk. I say, in my world, people solve their disagreements through dance, performance rituals, and psychomagic actions. In my world, the laws of poetry and quantum physics rule everyday life, and all TV stations are run by artists and poets. Beautiful statements, can no? But are they true? In my world, they are. But if I say, for the duration of this talk, racism does not exist in this theater, or no one here hates immigrants, gays, or lesbians, is this an accurate statement? Well, yes, in the sense that artistic reality can overshadow social reality for 18 minutes. <laughs> yeah. but, but if I say art can save lives, is this a correct statement? How so? When a battered woman comes out of a performance determined to leave her violent husband, I'd say art is working. When a gangbanger emerges from a performance thinking, hey, symbolic acts can be powerful ways to express my anger, I'm exchanging my gun for a video camera, I'd say we're definitely making a difference. But let's face it, there are more efficient ways to save lives, you know? I mean, what about volunteering for Doctors Without Borders? or creating a citizen watchdog group to monitor police brutality in Los Angeles with video cameras. Fact is, 
that first and foremost, we make art because we love it, and doing good with it is an effect we welcome. But we don't like to talk about this because we badly want to believe that art is necessary. Is it? I think it is. I think. I think democracy cannot thrive without art. I think democracy cannot thrive without the critical voice of the artist constantly testing its limits and possibilities. Imagine a world without the jazz man. <laughs> democracy cannot exist without the ethical mirror of art reflecting the distorted features of power. But do you think I am exaggerating? And if the answer is no, then the US is not a democracy. You follow my logic. Because it obviously has not listened, it's not listening to its artists and intellectuals. Is this an accurate statement or a mere poetic overstatement? I mean, I, I may be exaggerating a bit for pedagogy's sake, but the fact is that democracy, if done right, is the most difficult and painstaking form of government. It has to be a daily conscious project for every citizen, like performance art is for me. Democracy is not working here because most of us don't want to put the effort to have a democracy, so we mostly elect stooges like or don't vote at all, or allow ourselves to be tricked, or all of the above. The question here is, why is society not listening to its artists? Why are so many artists and intellectuals currently unemployed and uninsured like myself, or surviving from a job unrelated to our art? Why is this a much higher number than, say, unemployed doctors, lawyers, or computer programmers. Does this have anything to do with anti-intellectualism? Hmm. With racism, perhaps? I'm just raising questions. That's a job of critical artists. But now, let's bring the discussion home. Is this place, the red cat, our setting, a democratic institution? <laughs> if the answer is yes, does this mean that I can say and do whatever, whatever I want? <laughs> and I won't be censored, even if Mickey Mouse does not agree? <laughs> and if the answer is no, then why Am I allowed to talk about these delicate issues so openly? What is at stake here? Nothing, really. <laughs> Does the fact that nothing is at stake mean that critical thought no longer matters? That we are living in a society beyond content and that I can, in fact, say and do whatever, whatever I want, and it does not make any difference. I mean, short of committing suicide as performance right here, I can do everything else, you know, burn my green card or my bra, <laughs> burn a photo of the Pope or auction my left testicle, and tomorrow it will all be just an anecdote in Facebook, you know? <laughs> so no, carnales, I won't celebrate the Democratic Party. The fact is, I don't believe in government. I don't think it is possible to correct the problem from within the system. We have all tried. It does not work. The system is the problem. And politics is the act, the art of manipulating the system to perpetrate problems. 
being a radical within the system is a mere prestidigitation act, part of the spectacle of radicalism that media consumers require to feel alive and authenticate their extreme designer identities. In my world, the battles I would propose as political candidates are not even politicians. They are artists and literati, visionaries, not functionaries. The country I would like to live in only exists in planet poetry, planet performance, where imagination is the only law. Art is part of everyday life, and everyone practices what they believe. Imagination is my nation. That's where I wish to live and die. The crucial question here is, where does one find the spiritual energy to continue when you don't believe in mainstream politics and institutionalized religion gives you the creeps? <laughs> I mean, what to do when you are too old to belong to a subculture and participate in the global rave? <laughs> and too strange to get a chic job in a in academia, no? like in car arts. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we locate our descent when descent is a corporate product, an HBO special, a perfume? <laughs> the scent of descent. <laughs> An chic, extreme suicide. Ooh la la. <laughs> or when kids can simply wear a t-shirt that says art is resistance and think the job is done. <laughs> what to do when all the master discourses and epic narratives of hope are bankrupt? Which is the best energy drink? Do male enhancers really work? Since 9-11, as my meta horizons began to fade, I became obsessed with hope, with finding its spiritual source and location. Is hope a deep feeling of expansion located on the chest, the abdomen, or the sphincter? Is it a distant marker in the horizon that directs our actions, or a mysterious spiritual energy that propels you into the unknown, against the laws of gravity, is hope a matter of quantum theory, a form of poetic will, is hope by definition illogical and unreasonable, can hope be nurtured through education, does hope put you at odds with the state? Will I vote in the next elections? Did you vote last week? <laughs> or like the presidential candidates, my hope is not connected to God, country, or economy. My hope is located somewhere else, in obscure books, films, and performances, in a small communities that exist under the radar of the media, in the political streets of our cities, in the eyes of my students, in late night conversations at a bar full of outsiders, in animal species I have never seen, in the wisdom of indigenous cultures, my hope is always located on the other side of the border or the mirror. And in this very moment, my hope is located in your arms. I want to hug you. But there is a formidable border that separates me from your body, from your gorgeous body. It's a 3,000-year-old theatrical convention. 
and despite of a century of attempts by the avant-garde to destroy it, it remains intact. <laughs> Even in performance art, especially in the red cat, Is love still an option? Love in times of war, disease, and global warming. Love amidst earthquakes and floods. Under red alerts and a suspicious purple moon colored by smog and chemical waste. Is it possible to love as if 9-11 the invasion of Iraq, a new town, never, never happened. As if America was a true democracy and an active member of the world community. Can we love as if the Patriot Act didn't exist? As if the earth wasn't mortally wounded? As if we had open borders and open hearts? I think we can. Love can certainly help us continue. But only so far, a few more miles, a couple of months, and then we encounter yet another abyss. Like right now, I am facing another abyss. My beautiful audience, you. Can I stage dive at 57? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would love to stage dive into your arms, but if I miscalculate the risk, <laughs> one of you will sue me or CalArts TEDx. <laughs> but what if I call my stage dive performance art? Can I get away with murder? Should I? No, 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 no not tonight. And what about art? Is art our salvation? In the past, art has saved me from deportation, jail, and mental hospitals. True. Naming my antisocial behavior art has saved me from the jaws of the police, the border patrol, and the IRS. <laughs> but I talk about art as critical thought and embodied theory, not a subject or market. I talk about art as in uncompromising art practice, not as in the art world. Because let's face it, the art world is full of compromises, humiliation rituals, complicated power negotiations. It takes a special skill to survive it. And if you comply too much, you lose your voice, your sharp edges, your culo. <laughs> you become someone else you dislike. And one day, when you least expect it, they send you back to the margins where you wait and wait for a second chance that rarely comes? Or should you succeed in preserving your ethics? Uncompromised, you will eventually be rendered so marginal that no one will know that it was your choice in the first place to remain inconsequential. And what if my art leads to my own death? What if I die in the service of art, like the Italian artist Pippa Vaca, who was tragically murdered in Turkey as she traveled across Eastern Europe as a bride for peace? So being an art world darling, coolly pronto, and being poor and bitter, I rather choose to be an uncompromising dandy, <laughs> an insider, outsider, a mariachi with a big mouth, a performing contradiction, if you will, 
Contradicción is the name of my favorite lotion. <laughs> And my job as a performance artist is to avoid simplistic definitions, trends, and adjectives to remain slippery while I continue to ask irritating questions in original ways. What a bizarre job. <laughs> And I get paid for it. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> 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 Merde! I am so moody today. I feel like an existential wolf who went to sleep in the Arctic Circle and woke up on the rooftop of a Manhattan skyscraper. Aou! I wonder if community is still a source of hope. Community is one of our obsessions. We all long to belong to a larger we because we are obsessed precisely with what we lack. But you know, locos, locas, communities of sameness drive me up the wall. <laughs> Conjure my asthma, give me acute vertigo and claustrophobia. My community is not confined by ideological, national, or, or ethnic boundaries. Mine is a community of difference. And therefore, it is fragmented, ever-changing, and temporary. And that's how I like it. Besides, no one belongs to only one community, not even the Christian right, <laughs> not even my chihuahua. Siegfried Ne Babalu. <laughs> He hangs out with rodents, marsupials, and ghosts. <laughs> and like Babalus, my peers are scattered all over the Pinche planet, howling, outsiders jumping all over the planet. Some of you are my peers, others are total strangers in a virtual community of strangers. I long for my peers every night, and hopefully you long for me as well. And every now and then, when we get together, we lick each other's wounds and dance until the morning after like rabid kangaroos. And then we fall asleep in a circle of accidental bodies, and we dream of a better place and a better present. And in this imaginary place we dream about, artists and writers are actually needed and taken care of. We have all universal medical insurance, a decent low rider car, <laughs> a great studio space in the bohemian hood of our choice. <laughs> we don't have to write grants. And we get paid decently for what we do, and what we do matters. We make important decisions and fix concrete problems for society. In this imaginary place, we dream about schools, hospitals, prisons, even airports are reconceptualized and designed by artists. The daily papers are written by philosophers, novelists, and poets. We have ongoing access to electronic media where we make people think, remember, imagine, and laugh. Politicians and religious leaders consult our opinions before making important decisions. We collaborate with progressive doctors, activists, educators, lawyers, priests, socially conscious scientists in the great project of co-imagining a better future for the borderless community of humankind. Sounds so pinche corny, but so appealing, you know? In this imaginary place we dream about, There is a place for everyone. Well, 
almost everyone. Himina kai ne pai ne hoko yo mono heke daya me. Hina eke mine hoko ina ha. Imi oto imi ni haka uno he ina ha me oyo ha. Ne pe ano hoko ini ama haka e manha o boho ya ha. Ni mi hama oto yo mo hoka ini mi. Mi ama o o ni esa pai he ne ha. Ha pai ni hoko me he ne ha ha tio. Ta ini ha pa oto yo ne ha me heke. Thank you.